I'm here with Buddy and Joy. Hey guys. They are going to be working out the word later with a recap from our gorgeous Tolly. It's half term. I hope you guys have had a brilliant week. It certainly seems like you've been creative. Look at these amazing colourful sets that you've made for us. They look brilliant. Keep on sending your pictures in. We love them and we can put them up as a background each week. We've also got all your favourites today. We've got hashtag jokes, worship with Esther, and the gospel show with Elisha and Abigail. Are you ready for our worship time, buddy and joy? Yeah, let's get going. to Buddy and Joe's Bible Quiz. First question is, how old was Abraham when his son Isaac was born? The answer is a hundred. What was the reason that Jacob and his family began a new life in Egypt? The answer is a famine. Who led the people of Israel to the promised land? The answer is Joshua. Which prophet told Naaman to wash in the river Jordan to cure his leprosy? The answer is Elisha. 
Who rebuilt the walls of Jerusalem? The answer is Nehemiah. When Jesus was baptised, how did the Spirit of God appear to him? The answer is as a dove. What did Jesus eat to convince the disciples that he was indeed raised from the dead? The answer is fish and honeycomb. What does the New Jerusalem look like in the book of Revelation? The answer is like a bride. What did Saul see on the road to Damascus? The answer is a bright light. Who left his home country to travel to the land he did not know? The answer is Abraham, aka Abraham. Well done, everyone. No, Mr. Jones, I haven't had any falls at work recently. Bye bye. Okay, okay, bye. Bye bye. Insurance company took. Whoa! <laughs> Get your body in a healthy shape. <laughs> First up, you probably need a personal trainer, although I will recommend two. <sighs> now, next step is a balanced diet. My idea is to have a bacon sandwich in each hand. <laughs> I bought a juicer recently. This is a quite healthy probably um i've been using it on everything have you ever tried juiced toast <laughs> right anyway that's all for hashtag jokes thank you for watching bye bye To worship with Esther. Today I'm going to be playing No Longer Slaves on keyboard. Sing along with me.
Lovers in the Village, we sponsor a little girl from Ethiopia. She is five years old and we sponsor her through compassion. For 92 pence a day, she can receive the chance to go to school, medical checkups and nutritional support, vocational training to go into a job, the opportunity to be nurtured by a local church, and the letters that we send will be translated into her language and she'll write back to us. We can do this together. If everybody gives £1 a month, we'll easily cover all the sponsorship costs. During the COVID-19 pandemic, some of the projects have had to close down, but the money that we send is being redirected to provide food and hygiene products for those sponsored children, their families and their local community. Hi everyone! Welcome back to another episode of the National Abigail's Gospel Show. In today's episode, we are doing something very special today is testimony time abigail what do you understand about testimonies when we tell each other what god has done for us amen yes and two weeks ago we were talking about not forgetting to remember and the only way we can um, remember the goodness of God towards us is by testif- uh, by testifying what our God has done for us. Today, me and Abigail are going to tell how tell you how God has been good to us. Um, this scripture encourages encourages to us um, encourages to give testimony encourages us to give testimonies amen revelation 12 verse 11 says this they triumphed over him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony they did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death amen we have overcome because of our testimonies and i will testify testify and i just want to thank god for um his protection over us Thank you, look, we just want to thank him for the gift of life and we cannot take that for granted because of his love towards us. He is protecting us from all evil. Amen. Abigail, would you like to testify on God testify on God's goodness? Yes. The food that God has provided for us every single day, Amen. Yes, God has provided food for us every single day. And that is right, Abigail. Do you know that there are kids who spend the whole day without eating? We and we need to uh, we need to be grateful to our God for providing us food. Let us think about God's goodness and we say thank, thank you Lord. Lord. Thank you for watching another episode of the Large and Abbey Girls Gospel Show. Please subscribe and remember, trust, trust in the Lord. Bye! Buddy and Joy know it's really important to stay healthy and active, but not just their bodies, also their minds. They're in training to work out the word. Who showed up in the garden and lied to Adam and Eve? A snake. And what name is given to it later in the Bible? Satan. Did Satan start out as an angel? Yes. Why don't we need to be afraid of God's enemy? Because God is with us. What does John want us to know about the messages we hear? We shall we should test the, the messengers, and if they say what is true, then the the messenger is from God. Okay. Bye. Hey everybody, let's 
just take a look Near the end of the Bible is a really little book But it's got a lot of stuff that we can learn So come on everybody, it's time to turn To the letter we call First John Hey, thanks for coming back! You're not gonna try to rhyme this time? Uh, no, I'm not gonna try to rhyme. Because that didn't go very well last time. Uh, no, I, I remember that. No rhyming. Hey! Rhyme this time! You rhymed! Heh! <laughs> so I did! I think I'll try to rhyme this time! My cousin Bernie is a mime! Heh <laughs> uh. Which Bernie? Oh, good memory. Uh, the short one. So where were we? First John chapter 4. True teaching, true living, true loving. Don't listen to lies. God is bigger. Fantastic, Emily. Uh, who can read chapter 4, verses 7 through 12? Is it even a question? I'd be happy to. Thanks for asking. Dear friends, we should love each other because love comes from God. The person who loves has become God's child and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God because God is a love. This is how God showed his love to us. He sent his only son into the world to give us life through him. True love is God's love for us, not our love for God. God sent his son to die in our place to take away our sins. That is how much God loved us, dear friends. So we also must love each other. No one has ever seen God, but if we love each other, God lives in us. If we love each other, God's love has reached its goal. Love, love, love. I think we're back on the true loving part. Circle shell. Yep. That's right. We're back to true loving again. But John isn't repeating himself. Every time he circles back, he takes us in a little deeper. He tells us a little more. So what do we learn on this lap through the old tunnel of love? <laughs> Funny. Uh, let's see here. Uh, verses 7 and 8 say, The person who loves has become God's child and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. So if we want to be God's child, we need to get good at loving first? How do I do that? This is really important because that's not what John is saying. He isn't saying you are a child of God because you love. He's saying you love because you're a child of God. And the distinction there sounds important, but is elusive to my turtle brain. Okay, let me help. Some people today would say we can all be perfectly loving if we just try really, really hard. But that's not what the Bible teaches. What? Next you're gonna tell me angels aren't fat babies. I actually already told you that. If you have a hard time being loving and putting others first, that isn't because you're weird. It means you're normal. The Bible doesn't teach that true love is inside all of us. The Bible teaches that true love is from God. It flows out of God, and the only way for us to be truly loving is to receive God's love and then let it overflow onto everyone around us. Like a garden hose. A garden hose of love. Yeah, sort of. You can't make water come out of a garden hose if the hose isn't hooked up to a source of water. Is that the thingy on the side of the house? Yep, that's the thingy on the side of the house. It's called a spigot. A spigot? No, a spigot. A spigot? No, it's a G, not a CK. A spigot. You're saying God is a love spigot? Well, I'm not sure I'd say it exactly like that. John says God is the source of love. True, pure love can only be found in God. John says we see that love in Jesus, that Jesus was willing to die for us so we could live with God. In the fellowship hall of joy instead of the parking lot of darkness. Yes, and since God is the source of love. The love spigot. Not my choice of words, but yes. You can't make water come out of a hose that isn't connected to anything. And in the same way, you can't make true love come out of a person who isn't connected to God, a child of God. Exactly. So God would never say, you can't be my child until you're more loving. Instead, he would say, come be my child and you will become more loving. That's it. So in verse 12, John says, no one has ever seen God. But if we love each other, 
God lives in us. If we love each other, God's love has reached its goal. It is made perfect in us. I don't get it. What does seeing God have to do with God living in us? Oh, good question. So God is spirit. That means he isn't walking around in a body like you and I. He's everywhere, but we can't see him with our eyes. Got it. And? If we love each other, God lives in us. If we love each other, God's love has reached its goal. People see God when they see you and me loving others. When they see God's love flowing out of us, they are seeing God. So when we love, we show people God. Oh, that's big. That's really big. It sure is. And when God's love flows through us and reaches other people, God's love is reaching its goal. That's what God's love is for. It is to be shared. Like sharing water from your garden hose with the whole neighborhood. That's right. God is true love. We see that love in Jesus. We're filled with that love when we connect to God. We share that love when we connect to others. And then they see God in us. Whoa. Freaky. See you next time. What a brilliant episode. Now Buddy and Joy have some questions. To be God's child, do we first need to become good at loving? Where does true love come from? How did God show his love for us? How do we show God to others? I know you guys are smart and know all the answers to those questions, but if you want to be part of the online Work Out the Word crew, then please send me a video of yourself answering these questions and it could be you next week. Thanks for joining us today. That is all we have time for. It's been brilliant and thank you to my amazing team who helped put this together. Hope to see you guys soon, either at a creative or active session on Zoom or just feel free to get in touch if you've got any ideas. Don't forget we also have our Google Classroom where you can choose different activities to do and try. See you guys soon. Bye. Bye! Hi Church, we'd just like to let you know about this amazing feature if you're watching via online church. There is a live prayer button that you can click and it'll take you directly to someone on our prayer ministry team who can stand with you um, regarding anything that's on your heart. We know how powerful prayer is. There's no prayer request that's too small or too great for the Lord. And we want to stand with you and support you in anything that you are going through. So just hit that live prayer button. It'll take you to someone who will respond to your request. Um, and you just wait shortly for them to click on uh, and they'll be right with you.
glorify the Lord together this morning. Welcome to Within Show Community Church Online. I am so excited about um, what God is doing in our lives. And I'm just going to read from Psalm 34. It says, I will praise the eternal in every moment through every situation. Whenever I speak, my words will always praise him. Everything within me wants to pay tribute to him. Whenever the, pu the poor and humble hear of his greatness, they will celebrate too. Come and lift up the eternal with me. Let's praise his name together. When I needed the Lord, I looked for him. I called out to him and he heard me and responded. He came and rescued me from everything that made me so afraid. Look to him and shine. So shame will never contort your faces. This poor soul cried and the eternal heard me. He rescued me from my troubles. The messenger of the eternal surrounds me. Everyone who walks with him and is always there to protect and rescue us. Taste of his goodness. See how wonderful the eternal is. Anyone who puts trust in him will be blessed and comforted. Revere the eternal, you his saints. For those who worship him will possess everything important in life. Young lions may grow tired and hungry, but those intent on knowing the eternal God will have everything they need. Isn't that amazing? God is good. Hallelujah. All the time, God is good. Um, I want to welcome you again to Within Show Community Church Online. We are so glad that you could join us this morning. And as we get ready to worship God, I invite you to just begin to focus on Him right now and think of all the amazing things that God has done. Don't forget to remember. And I hope that throughout the week as well, you have been starving your fear and feeding your faith. Let faith begin to rise in you this morning. He, God is good. He has woken, up this us, uh, woken us up this morning. He has given us food on our tables, a roof of our shelter, water to drink, so many amazing things. So let's praise God together this morning with all of our hearts. On, God our is good. Today, today, he's worthy, worthy. In the presence of my enemies, I'll raise a hallelujah. Louder than the unbelief, I'll raise a hallelujah. My weapon is a melody.
gonna sing a little louder. Sing a little louder. I'm gonna sing a little louder. We'll sing a little louder. I'm gonna sing a little louder. I'm gonna sing a little louder. This is how I find
Yeah, it may look like we're surrounded, but this is how we fight our battles. We have come to that time now that we often describe as, when we're in church and hear it within Shaw Community Church, we describe it as a blessing time. It is time to give our tithes and our offerings. And this is how we fight our battles. In Luke 6, verse 38, it says, Do not hold back. Give freely and you will have plenty poured back into your lap. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, brimming over. You will receive in the same measure that you give. This is not just talking about tithes, about offerings, but in everything. Let us be a generous people. Let us be a generous church in giving of our time, in giving out kindness, good words. And let's now come together and give in tithes and offerings. The information is coming up on the screen. And if you're in the church, feel free to come to the front and let's worship God together. Psalms 32 says, For you are my hiding place. You protect me from trouble. You surround me with songs of victory. Many of us are facing big challenges. And at times it feels like everything that surrounds us is bad, is discouraging. But I want to tell you today, that as we worship and as we declare the name and the power of Jesus, we can stand, we can dance, we can shout, we can sing from a place of victory. Amen.
Father, we just want to thank you that you are indeed the one who gives seed to the sower. So Father, we thank you for every sower, God. Father, you have said in your word that unless a seed falls to the ground, that it cannot um, grow. So Father, we thank you that this seed, these tithes, these offerings that we have given, Almighty God, that they will harvest plentiful in your hand, Almighty God. Father, we thank you, Almighty God, for all the many blessings that you have bestowed on your sons and your daughters. And I pray for a spirit of generosity to begin to arise among us, O oh God. It is not about what we have in our hand, but it's about what you, God, do with what is in our hand. So, Father, I just thank you, Lord. I thank you, Father God, that we will not look to... Um, our finances will not look to the jobs that we have, will not look to anything, but we will look to you, God, because you are the one where our help comes from. So thank you, Father. We thank you for testimonies of amazing things that you are doing in people's lives because we have obeyed you. In Jesus' name we prayed. Amen. Hey, good morning, church. I want to thank you for joining us this morning. It's uh, time for our communion. Now, before we start, I would like to answer a question that I was asked. The question was, is it possible for me to take communion at home? You see, the answer is yes. Actually, when Jesus first modeled the spiritual tradition of communion, he did it in someone's home. So if you are a follower of Jesus Christ, you can take communion just about anywhere. Now, for those that don't know what communion is all about, let me give you a quick overview. Now, the most famous story of communion in the Bible is the story in the Last Supper. It was Jesus' last dinner with his disciples before he was killed. If you're interested, you can actually find more in Matthew chapter 26, in Luke 22, or even Mark chapter 14. You see, it happened as part of the celebration of Passover. It was actually a festival that began in the Old Testament period. You see, it was a festival for Jewish people uh, to remember and celebrate the Passover as a way to remember how God brought them out of Egypt and spared their lives in so many ways. You see, with Passover as the setting, Jesus now sits around his closest friends and and takes a bread and wine, which symbolizes Jesus giving his body, his blood for our sins. So today, as a follower of Jesus Christ, we remember Jesus' sacrifice on that cross and we examine our lives as we take part in communion. As it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 26, for whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So first, we want to examine ourselves and we want to ask the Holy Spirit to show us any sin in our life. And then we want to ask Jesus for his forgiveness. Scripture tells us in 1 Corinthians 11 verse 28, everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and the drink from the cup. 
So let us take a moment and examine ourselves. Yes. Second thing was they ate the cracker or the bread that represents the body of Christ. And we want to remember how his body was broken for our sins. You see, the scripture tells us in Matthew chapter 22, verse 26, while the disciples were eating, Jesus took bread and, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body. So let us take the bread and pray this prayer after me. Jesus, thank you for the bread. As I eat this bread, I remember your body that was broken for me. Let us take the bread. Third, we want to drink the juice or water or wine, whatever is in your hands that represents the blood of Jesus. We want to remember the new covenant or the promise that we can be free from all our sins through the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed on that blood on that cross. Scripture says in Matthew 26 verses 27 to 28, then he took a cup and we, when he had given thanks, he gave it to them saying, drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sin. Please take the cup and repeat this prayer after me. Thank you for the cup. As I drink this cup, I remember your blood that was shed for my forgiveness and the promise that I will live eternally with you. Let us drink. Jesus, we want to thank you for your sacrifice. We want to thank you that we are free because of you. Thank you for your freedom. In Jesus' precious name, Father, we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you.
Good morning everyone, welcome to Withenshaw Community Church. Due to the current government restrictions, we have the following programmes available for you online and in church. We have a prayer meeting that takes place every Sunday morning from 9.30am to 10am on Zoom. We have Village Live which is interactive Bible fun for families on church online, Facebook and YouTube. Then we have our Sunday celebration service which takes place on YouTube, Facebook and Church Online at 10.30am. And if you miss out, you can catch up later on YouTube. We have two Alpha courses currently running, one on Monday evenings and the other on Wednesday mornings. Freedom in Christ is on every Tuesday. The Youth Alpha course is on every Thursday on Zoom. Life groups are on every Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday, so if you would like to join, please contact us. There is a Bible study with Pastor Paul on the book of Genesis every Saturday on Zoom. On the last Friday of each month, there is a prayer meeting that takes place at 10 p.m. to 12 p.m. That's the end of our notices for this week. Have a blessed week and enjoy the rest of the service. And now we're going to get ready to listen to the word of God. God's word admonishes us or encourages us to be not only hearers of the word, but doers of the word. So please get your pens get your Bibles and get your journals ready so you can note down the things that God will speak to you about in this um, through his word. And then don't forget to remember. And then you will put into practice all the things that you are learning. So get ready and we're going to be blessed. Amen. Hey, welcome to Whittingshaw Community Church. I want to thank you for joining us this morning. I want to thank every one of you for all your encouraging words, especially for your engagement online. It's very different and difficult to preach to a camera. And it's really encouraging when I see engagement and feedback online during the service. How many know that this is a very different way of uh, preaching to a traditional way of preaching? And what the pandemic has taught us is the art of becoming adaptable. And that's exactly what change does. And change is literally unavoidable. Uh, change is a process. And not just because of the pandemic, even without the pandemic, change comes to all of us, whether we prepare for it or we, whether we don't prepare for it. Our lives are all in a constant state of uh, transition. Life is always moving forward. Nothing, I mean, nothing ever remains the same, right? Uh, to move forward, you have to leave the past behind. And there is no standing still because time is always moving forward. To a greater or lesser degree, we are continually being changed, whether it is suddenly or is gradually, we are always being changed. Everything in this world is liable to change and it is the law of life. If you don't change your life, listen, your life will change you. Now, last week, I talked about how information will cause you to change, either for the negative or the positive. Now, remember, whatever you feed grows, and whatever you starve dies. So, what did we say last week? So, knowing the fact that whatever we feed grows, we will feed our faith so that our faith can grow. And knowing the fact that whatever we starve dies, we will starve fear. So what do we do? We will starve our fears and feed our fate. You see, we can't allow every piece of information to occupy our minds. We have to learn how to filter the information that comes into our minds, especially in this season. Because whatever information you feed your mind tends to control your life. 
and whatever you think about tends to direct your life. Now, listen, the reality is that you are continually being changed based on the information you feed your mind, either for the negative or the positive. And that's why Jesus said in Mark 4, 24, consider carefully what you hear. Why? Because the information you feed your mind tends to control your life. And something within the human nature is that we all like to be liked. We like to be cherished. We like to be appreciated by our families, our friends and people around us. So the, the pressure builds us, right? Because we like to be liked. So what do we do? We copy the behaviors of this world to get more Facebook friends, to get Instagram followers or even Twitter followers. What if I told you that God doesn't care about how many Facebook friends you have? How many people follow you on Twitter? And what if I told you that God isn't worried about how popular you are? In fact, what I want to tell you that the purpose of the gospel isn't to fit in. If you're in church, why don't you tell your neighbor you're not called to fit in? Now, if you're online, why don't you just type you are not called to fit in? You see, you're not called to fit in. In fact, you're called to stand out. God has called us to be different, to stand against the grain, to be a city on a hilltop. You are not called to fit in. Listen to what it says in Romans 12 verse 2. Do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by renewing your mind. New Living Translation actually puts it this way. Don't copy the behaviors and the customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. The title of my message this morning is, You are not called to fit in. Let us pray before we begin. Father, we want to thank you. We want to honor you. We want to praise you for your goodness. Father, as we are gathered here together to hear what you have to say, Father, we want to pray that you open our ears, open our eyes to see what you have to say. Father, prepare our hearts to hear your word. Let the seeds fall into good grounds so when we hear it, it be activated so it can change us to be more like you. In Jesus' mighty name, Father, we pray. Amen and amen. I really want to thank God for the Bible. I love the Old and the New Testament. There is so much we can learn. This morning, I want us to look at the first Samuel chapter 8. But before I do, let me give you a bit of an overview. When we look at the history of Israel, God had chosen Moses to lead the nation of Israel and then for Joshua to succeed him. Uh, let me just read from Deuteronomy chapter 31. When Moses had finished giving these instructions to all the people of Israel, he said, I am now 120 years old. I am no longer able to lead you. The Lord has told me, you will not cross the Jordan River, but the Lord your God himself will cross over ahead of you. He will destroy the nations living there and you will take their possession of their land. Joshua will lead you across the river just as the Lord promised. Then Moses called for Joshua and all Israel watched and he said to him, be strong and courageous for you will lead this people into the land that the Lord swore to their ancestors he would give them. You are the one who will divide it among them as the grants of the land. Do not be afraid or discouraged for the Lord will personally go ahead of you and he will be with you. He will neither fail you nor abandon you. God will be with you. He will neither fail you nor abandon you. It's amazing uh, because God does exactly what he said he would do. He gave them victory after victory. They witnessed God's power and love for his people. Uh, what's interesting is the fact that Joshua wasn't commanded to lay hands on any successors. What Joshua did is he left behind elders whom he had trained to serve God. But when all the elders died, the new generation turned away from the Lord and they followed the idols of the land. Listen to what it says in Judges 2 verses 10 to 12. After that generation died, another generation grew up who did not acknowledge the Lord to remember the mighty things he had done for Israel. Before I read on, this is very important. You see, this is the danger of forgetting to remember God's goodnesses. 
This is what happens to the next generation. They forgot all the great things, all the great signs and wonders, all the great miracles. So what was the result? Verse 11. The Israelites did evil in the Lord's sight. They served the images of Baal. They abandoned the Lord and God of their ancestors who had brought them out of Egypt. They went after other gods, worshipping the gods of the people around them. And they angered the Lord. You see, this generation did not acknowledge the Lord or remember the mighty things that he had done for Israel. You see, they wanted to fit in with the rest of the world. So what do they do? They reject God and they followed the false idols that the people around them followed. You see, during that time, God called out prophets when it was needed to bring some sense to the people. Then during the period of judges, God raised up leaders here and there to give them uh, victories. But no one was actually in charge of a nation as the whole. Uh, this is what it says in Judges 21 verse 25. In those days, Israel had no king. All the people did whatever seemed right in their own eyes. You see, the people of Israel saw how every other nation around them had kings. Kings that would govern nations. So the Israelites wanted to be like all the other nations. Uh, around that time, God had raised a prophet by the name of Samuel to lead the nation. So the elders gathered and they presented the request for a king to Samuel. Let me read from 1 Samuel chapter 8, verses 1 to 5. As Samuel grew old, he appointed his sons to be judges over Israel. Joel and Abiah, his oldest son, held court in Beersheba. But they were not like their father, for they were greedy for money. They accepted bribes and prevented justice. Finally, all the elders of Israel met at Ramah to discuss the matter with Samuel. Look, they told him, you are now old and your sons are not like you. Give us a king to judge us like all the other nations have. I mean, ouch, you are now old and your sons are not like you. Although this was very true, but it must have been really hard to swallow. Listen, you are old and your sons are not like you. So give us a king like all the other nations. You see, this is what happens when you copy the behaviors of this world. When you want to fit in, not only they were following false gods, they now wanted to be like all the other nations. You see, they were forgetting the fact that they were different. That the Israel's strength was not like all the other nation. The Israelites were God's covenant people. The Almighty God was their king. You see, unlike all the other nations, the glory of God dwelled in the midst. And that the law of God was their wisdom. You see, they had everything they needed. They were forgetting that it was God who helped them with every victory. You see, when you study the history, you see, I, I totally understand that the Philistines were still a powerful nation at the time, uh, that the Ammonites were also a great threat to them. Israel had no standing army and they also had no king to lead them. So the elders were looking around. Uh, every other nation had a king. So they felt like they should copy everyone else, that they felt like they should fit in, that they, uh, they, they felt like they were looking weak because they didn't look like every other nation. Let me tell you something. This is the danger when we conform to the patterns of this world. You see, the elders forgot that it was the Lord who was Israel's king. It was the Lord who gave them the ability to defeat the enemy. You see, Samuel was a man of a spiritual insight. When they approached him and they demanded for a king, it was clear evidence that the elders were spiritually dead. You see, they were not rejecting Samuel, they were rejecting God. And that grieved Samuel's heart. And I love this. In verse 6, Samuel was displeased with their request and went to the Lord for guidance. I love this. Samuel prayed to God for wisdom and guidance. Listen, we are living in a difficult season, in a season that we cannot be like everyone else, in a season that we are called to be different. Listen, the Bible is very clear. Do not conform to the patterns of this world. Or the other translation puts it, do not copy the behaviors and the customs of this world. 
You see, in this season, in everything that we are asked to do before we say yes and copy what everyone else does, we need to be like Samuel. Like Samuel, we need to pray to God and ask for wisdom. And when we pray, be confident that He will answer. Let me tell you something. God is never surprised. So when Samuel prayed to God for wisdom, God answered his prayer. And this is what the Lord said in verse 7. Do everything they say to you, the Lord replied, for they are rejecting me, not you. They don't want me to be their king any longer. Ever since I brought them from Egypt, they have continually abandoned me and followed other gods. And now they are giving you the same treatment. Do as they ask. But solemnly warn them about the way a king will reign over them. You see, they were not rejecting Samuel, but they were rejecting God. You see, they didn't want God to be their king any longer. And this is the danger of wanting to fit in. Wanting to be like everyone else. Uh, they were like so blinded by the culture and, uh, and the surroundings that they were forgetting that their strength was not like all the other nations. Uh, they were God's covenant people. God was their king. They were rejecting God. You see, this is how loving our God is. So he told Samuel, you know what? Warn them. Let them know what they're asking for. Make sure they know what they are signing for. And, and, and this is what it says in verses 10 to 22. So Samuel passed on the Lord's warning to the people who were asking for a king. This is how a king will reign over you, Samuel said. The king will draft your sons and assign them to his chariots and his charioteers, making them run before his chariots. Some will be generals and captains in his army. Some will be forced to plow in his fields and harvest his crops. And some will make his weapons and his chariot equipment. The king will take your daughters from you and force them to cook and bake and make perfumes for him. He will take away the best of your fields and vineyards and olive groves and give them to his own officials. He will take a tenth of your grain and your grape harvest and distribute them among the officers and the attendants. He will take your male and female slaves and demand the finest for your cattle and donkey for his own use. He will demand a tenth of your flock and you will be his slaves. When that day comes, you will beg for a relief from this king you are demanding, but the Lord will not help you. But the people refused to listen to Samuel's warning. Even so, we still want a king, they said. We want to be like all the other nations around us. Our king will judge us and lead us into battle. So Samuel repeated to the Lord what the people said. And the Lord replied, do as they say, give them the king. Then Samuel agreed and sent the people home. You see, even with all these warnings, they wanted to be like all the other nations. They said, our king will judge us and lead us into battle. So God in his anger gave them a king. And this is what it says in Hosea 13 verse 11. So in my anger, I gave you a king and in my wrath, I took him away. Let me tell you something this morning. The greatest judgment God can give us is to let us have our own way. That is the greatest judgment, to let us have our own way. You know what? We don't know what is good for us. You see, even though the Bible has given us clear instructions not to be like the rest of the world, we want to copy the behavior and the customs of this world. If you're in church, why don't you tell your neighbor, I am not called to fit in. If you're online, why don't you just type your comments in the comment area, I am not called to fit in. Go on. Yes. You are not called to fit in. Listen to what James tells us in James chapter 4, verse 4. You adulterous, don't you realize that friendship with the world makes you an enemy of God? I say it again. If you want to be a friend of the world, you make yourself an enemy of God. So listen, in simple terms, the world is the enemy of God. And whoever wants to be a friend of the world 
cannot be a friend of God. And if you want to be a friend of the world, then you cannot be a friend of God. You see, it all starts with a friendship. Then you want to seek approval, wanting to be like the rest, wanting to fit in, wanting the things that everyone else has. Everyone else has idols, so you want to have idols. Then what do you do? You start worshipping those idols. And everyone has a king, so we want a king. Listen, friendship leads to loving. So friendship with the world leads to loving the world and this makes it easy to conform to the world or copy the behaviors uh, of this world. Now James actually compares friendship with the world, uh, actually compares it to adultery. You see this is what he said in James 4 verse 4, you adulteress, don't you realize that friendship with the world makes you an enemy of God? I say it again, if you want to be a friend of the world, you make yourself an enemy of God. Listen, as believers, we are called to be married to Christ. Listen to what it says in Romans 7 verse 4. Therefore, my brethren, you also have become dead to the law through the body of Christ, that you may be married to one another, to him who was raised from the dead, that we should bear fruit to God. Listen, we have to remain faithful to Christ. We cannot be a generation that breaks that covenant and becomes unfaithful. Listen, if God is telling you to live differently from how people around you are living, then be obedient to God. Don't just follow everyone else in what they are doing. Be obedient to God. Let me be very clear though. I'm not saying that you should rebel or stop fitting in just for the sake of it. What I am saying is that we should choose to live God's way even if it looks different. Yes, actually, especially when it looks different. You might be asking yourself, well, how do I know what God is saying? Listen, God won't say anything that's different to His Word. What God tells us must align to His Word. If it's not aligned, then it's not from God. You see, when we look at Samuel's sons, they were standing out for the wrong reasons. They were going against God's Word by taking bribes. So, we are not going to stand out for the wrong reasons, okay? Listen, God has a plan and He has a purpose for your life. You don't want to copy someone else's because God has a plan and has a purpose for you. Yes, for you. God doesn't want you to fit in with the rest of the world, but also He doesn't want you to stand out for the wrong reasons. Why? I want to read from Romans 12 verse 2 again, and I want to expand on something that builds faith in me. You see, when the Bible says, do not copy the behavior and the customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. I love this. Then it says, then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. You see, Apostle Paul uses three words to describe the will of God. It says, one, it is good. Regardless of what the Lord might ask you to do, we'll find it that the, the end is good for us. Second thing he says is pleasing. It's pleasant in the sense that when His will is revealed to us, it's something that we will are made willing to do. We will enjoy doing it. It's pleasant to us. And number three, it is perfect. Nothing we could add to God's plan would improve it. When, he's, when He reveals His will to us, uh, we need to realize that God sees the end before the beginning. He knows the path He will take us. And He knows the obstacles and the valleys that we will pass through as we go. Listen, do you feel like you're different? Have you ever felt like you don't fit in or you don't belong? You know what? It's hard to admit, but in our world today, being liked and wanted is something everyone wants. It's just like the way the culture forces us to feel. And like the elders who approach Samuel wanting to be like everyone else, we can easily find ourselves drifting to the things of this world. What I want you to understand today is that our God has called us to be different, to stand out against the grain, to be a city on a hilltop, and to be the change for the world that lacks 
hope, realizing that if you don't fit in, it's, a, it's actually a good thing. You are not made to fit in. You were made to fulfill your calling in Christ. Listen, it is okay not to fit in because you were made to fit out. It's okay not to fade in because you were made to stand out. So stand tall, press on and press forward to the things that God has for you. Remember, the Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, but you are the chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of Him who called you out of darkness into His wonderful light. So this morning, I want to ask you, why fit in when you were born to stand out? If you are in the church, then join me by telling your neighbor, I was born to stand out. If you are online, then type in the comments, I was born to stand out. Listen, we were born to stand out. Why we want to fit in? Listen, we are a chosen people. We are a royal priesthood. We are a holy nation. We are God's special possession. God has taken us out of darkness into his wonderful light. Let your light shine. Let your light shine in the darkness. Don't turn off your light. Don't be like everyone else. Don't try to fit in when you are called to stand out. Yes, you were called to stand out. Listen, God has called you for a time like this. God has called you for a season like this to stand firm and let your light shine. When we are asked to do something, listen, we will seek the Lord before we say yes in everything. We don't rush to follow the crowd, but we will rush and pray and seek the Lord. Why? Because we are not called to fit in. That's right. We are not called to fit in. Listen, God has called us to go against the grain, to be the salt, to be that city on the hill, to be the light of the world. Before you were born, you were called to be different. You have been given potential to be a world changer, to walk so differently that the world that others will notice. And although being different might sometimes look lonely or even unpopular, you must understand that no matter the circumstances, God is still with you. God is still for you and God will never leave you. Listen, I want to pray for you. Father, we want to thank you today. We want to honor you. We want to praise you for the word that you have spoken. We want to pray that it will lift us up, Father God. We want to pray that uh, for all the lives that will be transformed, all the lives that will be changed through this word, Father God. We want to thank you that you help us not to fit in. Help us not to be conformed to the things of this world, but help us to be transformed, Father God, to be that light, to be that salt, Father God, and bring light to darkness in every area we go. Father, help us to be world changes for you in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we pray, we honor you, we praise you. Amen and amen. Come on, just before I close our service today, I know there are some of you, honestly, I do, I do know that there are some of you, you are recognizing right now that there's something missing in your life. Why is it that you continue to search for more? You continue to search for more meaning. You continue to search for more acceptance. Listen, having more followers on Facebook, more followers on Instagram, wanting to be like others, trying to fit in, will not fill in the void that you're feeling. The reality is because you're created to receive that void from God. The bottom line is, and we have all sinned, and we have all fallen short. We've done things against God that, uh, that's wrong. And God in His goodness, He sent His Son Jesus to forgive all of our sins and make us brand new. You see, we were created with a God-shaped void. And there are those of you, you've been searching for meaning, searching for fulfillment, searching for something to satisfy you for. You have been searching for your whole life and you just can't find it. You know why? Because you were created to need and to know God. And that's why you are here today. That's why you're watching this service online. And so if that's you and you are saying, yes, I recognize I need God. I need his forgiveness. I have sinned against the holy God and I need his forgiveness. I need his grace. If that's you and, and you say, that's me. I, I want this forgiveness today by faith. I want to give my life to him. If that's your prayer today, 
All you have to do is call on the name that's above every other name, the name of Jesus, and God hears your prayer. And if that's you, and you need His grace, you need His forgiveness, if you're online, just type in the chat right now, I need Jesus. Yes, I need His forgiveness today. Yes, I want to surrender my life to Jesus. And if that's you, and you are saying yes to Jesus, we will pray this prayer together. All you have to do is just repeat this prayer right after me. Okay? Heavenly Father, forgive my sins. Jesus, save me. Make me new. Fill me with your spirit so I can follow you and show your love in all that I do. My life is not my own. I give it to you. In Jesus' precious name, I pray. Amen. Amen. If you are online, please click the link below. Please fill in your details so that we can get in touch with you and help you with your next step. If you are at church, then please lift your hands and one of the leaders will come and help you. I want to thank you again for joining us this morning. See you next week, but in the meantime, have a blessed week. God bless you. That has been an amazing word um, from God this, uh, this morning about us not being called to fit in. And I feel like at this time that um, wherever you are, I know many of us, all of us, so we are guilty of trying to fit in. Um, I remember even if I'm at work and other people are moaning about how horrible the shift is going, I'm tempted to join in and say, oh yeah, the other day it was this. But that's just encouraged me and convicted me not to be like that, but to speak life into a situation. So we're going to take some time now um, before we go into our last song of worship and praise, just to bring before God those times and those places that we've wanted to step back as the church and hide instead of standing out and declaring what God is saying. These are difficult times that we are facing, but God has a plan and a purpose for us as a church. He has told us that we are a holy nation, a royal priesthood, called forth to show forth his praise. You know, we've, he's taken us out of darkness and into his marvelous light to um, show the world, to be the light in the world. So yeah, let's pray this morning um, before we get ready to worship and just repent. Father God, we come before you this morning and we are just so convicted, Lord, um, about wanting to fit in with the things that are going on in this world instead of standing out. Father, I just pray, Almighty God, we come before you and we humble ourselves before you and we ask, Lord, that you would just strengthen and encourage, Almighty God. You have told us to be bold, to be strong, and to remember that you, O oh Lord God, are our God. There is no one beside you. Father, I pray that um, as we worship this morning together, that we would remember who we are, who you've called us to be, and more importantly, whose we belong to, Father. We belong to you, King of Kings. Father, thank you, Almighty God, for everything that you are bringing to hearts and minds right now, God, about places where we are trying to fit in, and you are saying to us, no, I didn't call you into that place. I called you to be a worshiper. I called you to, be, to prophesy. I called you to speak up, to speak against injustice, to dance on injustice, Lord. So Father, I pray, God, that you will raise up an army in this place, that you will raise up warriors. Father, let a roar begin to rise up in each and every one of your sons and your daughters. For you have said in the last days that you will pour out your spirit on your sons and your daughters, on all flesh, almighty God. As you pour out your spirit, Father, I thank you that a mighty army is rising up. Father God, people that will not be ashamed, that we will not be ashamed, that Father God, we will challenge the status quo, that Father God, we will be countercultural, almighty God. We will not stand 
we will not fit in almighty god just because it feels better but father god even when it's painful when it's difficult when it's hard to stand out god we will be ones that will say yes we will stand out just like shadrach meshach and abednego father god they stood out and they were not afraid to be thrown in the fire so father raise up the shadrachs meshachs and abednego raise up the esters oh god who are born for such a time as this the daniels of our times the annas those who are not afraid almighty god God, to just take a comfortable place almighty God in this earth but let us rise up oh God that we may magnify you father we want to raise a hallelujah in the presence of our enemies Father, we want to raise up a hallelujah, oh God. Yeah, just begin to lift up your voice right now in Jesus' name. Lift up your voice, lift up your voice, magnify him. He is worthy. Let courage and let courage begin to arise as you lift up your voice this morning. Hallelujah. That's it. That's it. In the name of Jesus, courage is rising up. I see courage rising. I see the Lion of Judah roaring over his people in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we thank you. Oh God, I thank you that brave ones are rising up. The lion-hearted are rising up in Jesus' name. In this generation, almighty God, that Father God, we will not never go down in history as a people that cowered back. But Father God, the ones that will say we will not retreat, we will not surrender. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's raise a hallelujah as we worship God together. God is good. I raise a hallelujah In the presence of my enemies I raise a hallelujah Louder than the unbelief I raise a
Well, thank you so much for joining us this week. We hope you've been blessed. And just a reminder, there is no teas and coffee on Zoom this week. And we just pray that you will have an amazing week. And remember, put into practice all the things that we are learning as God begins, as God continues to speak to us. God bless you.